Hi, and welcome to today's episode, which is all about taking some humble rice and elevating it to the next level. The other day I was thinking about lasagna and whether I could use something else in place of the pasta. I've used tortillas before, worked really well. And then thought, hmm, could I put rice on there maybe? Would that work? So I started Googling whether you could cook rice in the oven and kept seeing Charleston rice come up. From what I can gather, Charleston rice has its origins in jollof rice and gulla rice, I think, which are dishes from West Africa that were brought over by enslaved Africans. Seeing the recipe for Charleston rice made me realize that I didn't have a pot that would work on my induction stove anymore since I had to replace everything. I then put this one on my wish list and one of my patrons very kindly bought it for me. So thank you very much for that, much appreciated. I've decided I'm gonna do a kind of riff on a jollof rice type of thing in the oven. If you haven't come across jollof before, you take white rice and cook it down with tomato paste, chili, garlic, ginger sometimes, depending on what region, you know, they all have their own little takes on it. Apparently Ghanaians and Nigerians both take their jollof very seriously and there's somewhat of a war going on on who makes the best one. I'm not gonna claim this as a jollof rice by any stretch of the imagination, but it's just gonna be hopefully a very tasty little dish. Because I'm baking it in the oven, I'm not gonna have to worry, should I stir it, should I not? I don't know, because I've never been great at cooking rice. That's why I've got a rice cooker. I'm gonna use Italian black rice in mine. So as the name implies, it's a grain that's completely black. I don't think I've cooked this particular one before. I've used Chinese forbidden rice, which is a kind of very plump grain, and it does look somewhat similar. I've opted for this, A, because I don't have any white rice, and B, I don't have any brown rice, and C, I've had this in the cupboard for ages and thought, oh, that's what I'm gonna use today. <laughs> so the color of it's probably gonna be quite purple, um, but that is gonna be fine. White rice serves a purpose as a nice bland vehicle for delicious foods, like stir fries, chilies, that kind of thing but I quite enjoy brown rice, black rice, and so on, because they've got a really nice texture and a slight nutty flavor to them. They've also got higher nutrient counts as well. For example, this has got twice the amount of protein at 7.2 uh, grams and five times the amount of dietary fiber, which is nice for your digestion. No matter what color of rice you're doing, you wanna rinse it first to wash off the excess starch. I've seen people talk about arsenic as well, like rice has got arsenic around it and washing it, rinsing it. Uh, helps rinse that away. When you hear people say, wash your rice, don't put soap on there, <laughs> which I've seen someone do. <laughs> Just lots of cold water. The ratio I'm gonna use is one part rice to two parts water. I will give you the gram and milliliter measurements, but I would tend to stick to a volume measurement. For example, if I'm doing white rice and I want several portions, I do one cup of rice and then one cup of water. Using grams and milliliters, it's just not, you, you can end up either with really dry or really soggy, mushy rice, which you don't want. So stick to, just use the same size cup. So one of each or in this recipe, one of these and then two of water. So here's the grains of rice, they're a gorgeous color. They appeal to my inner goth. So I'm gonna give them a good rinse. Rinsing will also take out any tiny little stones or bits of grit, anything like that. You might see some little bits of husk. So I'm just gonna leave that on the side there and it can be draining a bit. I'm gonna cook the rice with some onions, garlic, and bell peppers. So I'm gonna chop up three of these little red onions. I'm just using that because that's what I've got. Feel free to use anything you like. I've started preheating the oven at 180, about 350C, and I'm gonna slowly start bringing the pan up to temperature. I'm gonna guzzle in maybe two tablespoons or so of olive oil on the onions. I'm gonna cut the sprouty end off, leave the root end attached, because that gives me something to hang on to. And then split that in half. And then just pull off the outer couple layers. Doing these a medium dice or so. So just a series of vertical cuts. Spin it and then do horizontal cuts. That's all nicely diced. So I'm gonna use probably half a bulb of garlic. I'm just gonna give these a bit of a peel. I am gonna do them in the garlic press, but I just find it can get a bit messy, especially for this quantity. And then you end up wasting some of the garlic. Drop the onions in. Give them a good stir. I'm gonna cook them off until everything's a bit golden. Seven, eight minutes. I'm gonna put in a good pinch of salt, maybe a quarter teaspoon or so. That's gonna help pull the moisture out of the onions and help them brown a bit quicker. I'm gonna do all the garlic so it's ready to just put in. So I've peeled them and taken the end off. So that's all the garlic ready to go. And then for the pepper, slice the top off. 
I'm going to pull this bit out like that, take the little stalky bit off. And then to get these white ribs out, I kind of cut to either side of it. And then it's just easier to get them out that way. The reason for taking them out is it can be a little bit bitter, that white part. But if you don't, you know, if you can't be bothered, that's fine. And then take that down into strips. And then dice it. And then for the little lid part, just go around. Well, maybe we can take them down a bit. I'm going to add a tin of chopped tomatoes into mine. I've done a bit of Googling whether it's possible to do brown rice in the oven. It is, but the recipes say to add boiling water. So I'm thinking I'm going to heat this, pour it into a jug and then heat it up in the microwave just so everything's hot going in. And then if I remember, I'm going to pour the boiling water into there because that's extra flavour. So this is the stage the onions are at. So you can see they're all softened, going a little bit brown in places. So I'm going to add the garlic. I'm going to do a teaspoon of caraway seeds. These are optional, I just really enjoy the flavour. Let that fry off for a minute or so until I can start smelling the garlic. And then I'll add the rice. I'm going to toast off the rice a little bit. Just adds to the flavour a touch. But it's not, you don't need to do that step if you don't want. I'm going to use some chicken flavour stock powder in mine. I'll do two of these, so that's probably three tablespoons altogether. Okay, now I'm going to add the rice in. Just getting everything coated in a bit of the oil. You could also use butter as well if you wanted, like vegan butter. Let that continue to cook for a minute or so. I've heated up the tomatoes and the rice has been toasting for about three minutes. So now I'm going to pop some other flavours in here. I'm going to do about a teaspoon of smoked paprika. I'll do like a tablespoon or so of tomato puree, maybe two tablespoons. A bit of black pepper. Quarter teaspoon, half a teaspoon, something like that. For the chilli, I'm going to use some of this fiery harissa paste. I'm going to do you a video on how to make your own, so keep an eye out for that. And I'll pop a card in. This is a North African chilli paste made from chilies. Um, let's have a look. Oil, spices, that kind of thing. And again, it, each household, each region as well, they all have different variants of what they put in here. If you haven't got it, just use hot sauce or just chilli powder, chilli flakes, anything with a bit of heat or skip it all together if you don't want anything spicy. And I'm also going to add a couple of avocado leaves. So these are very similar to bay leaves. I'm just, I need to use this bag up, which is why I'm using them. But yeah, feel free to use bay if not. So I'm going to do three of the avocado leaves. Do maybe two or three bay. And I'm going to do heat tablespoon of the harissa. And I'll pour the hot tomato in. Give this a stir. Slide in the peppers. I'm going to add in the stock, so I did swill out the tomato can, so that's two cups. And then because those tomatoes are very wet, I think I'm just going to do a half cup, so it's three and a half cups all together. My thinking is I'd rather them be dry and then I can add more liquid if it needs it, because you can't unmush rice. Give this a good stir, and then I'll bring it to a boil, put the lid on and pop it in the oven. I'm just going to check the liquid, see if it's tasty enough. Yeah. That's fine. If you're using just water instead of stock, you'll probably want to add more salt because that stock's got salt in it. So that's fine. So now I'm going to pop the lid on. So I've got that on a kind of one of the lower shelves, just so there's room for the knob at the top. I reckon it's probably going to take about an hour. That's what the other recipes seem to be saying. So I might take it out at three quarters of an hour and we can have a look and see if it needs a bit more water adding. Yeah, it's all seen a bit. We're at 50 minutes since I put the rice in the oven, so let's whip it out and have a look. I'm just trying to keep you backed off a little bit. Mmm, okay. I'm just going to go in, I think, at the side. I'm just going to try a bit, see what the texture's like. That's delicious. <laughs> I might put it on for the remaining 15 minutes, because it's got a slight bit a little bit too much bite and I might splash a bit more water in. Not lots, but maybe quarter cup, something like that, a couple of tablespoons. A little drizzle. That was boiling water. I'm just gonna stir that in. Yeah, and I'll pop that in for 15 minutes. The extra 15 minutes is finished, so let's whip it out and hopefully that should do it so we can start eating this thing. I'm gonna hand hold you again just so I can back you away from the steam if I need to. Ooh, yum, 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 yum. Yeah, I think. That's probably good to go. Chopped up a few spring onions, there's maybe six or seven, something like that. Let's 
and I throw them in. They'll keep more of their flavor if I do it at this stage rather than putting them in at the beginning. Pop the lid on and I'll let that sit just for a few minutes, just to rest. Let's dive into this rice and have a little go on it. I mean, the smells coming out of that pan are incredible. Let's have a little try on the rice. If the smells are anything to judge by, this is gonna be phenomenal. <laughs> Mm. Yes. <laughs> so many delicious flavours. And then the texture of the rice is really nice. There's a bit of firmness, but it doesn't stick in your teeth. It's very rich and a little, I don't know if sticky is quite the right word, but yeah, there's a very nice, rich texture to it. Mm, very pleasing. If you like me and you struggle with cooking rice on the stove, this is definitely going to be a good recipe for you. Because mm. I just... You know, once you've fried the onions and everything off, you just put it in the oven and that's it. You don't have to fret about it. In terms of variations, I think if you wanted to do that with white rice, if you're doing it in a pot with a lid like this, I did see little bits of steam escaping, not tons or anything, but a little bit. So maybe do one and a quarter cup of water per one of rice. And then add, a, and again, under, underwater it because <laughs> you can add more in it's just really difficult well it's impossible to take it back out again because once you lose that texture it's really there's just not much you can do to get it back into the plump grains again i will update the pin comment if i try it initially i had planned on putting some red rice in there as well but then ultimately decided to just use the black so that i could know what the finished outcome would be so you could buy various different types of rice and use you know like half a cup of brown, half a cup of black, half a cup of red, half a cup of something else, that kind of thing. You can put mushrooms in there fairly easily, I reckon. I, If I was doing it, I'd cook the mushrooms off first and then take them out of the pot and then go from the onion stage. Uh, Cause otherwise the mushrooms can get a bit waterlogged. Um, you could always roast the mushrooms separately in the oven or in the air fryer as well, and then add them in at the stage, you know, once you've taken them out of the oven. I reckon you could put pui lentils in here. These ones, pui lentils, they've got a great texture to them. They maintain like a nice bit of firmness. So yeah, just bang a load of those in, uncooked, and I think it'll cook at the same rate as the rice. Mm. You might want a splash of extra water though. Maybe if you did, for example, a cup of lentils, extra half cup of water. And then again, at the end, you can always add more water into it if it needs it, because that's going to soak some water up. So if you just put it in without extra water, it's going to take water away from the rice. I mentioned about the harissa video, so I'm going to roll straight into that. Ah, that's going to go everywhere, isn't it? So I've been soaking some chili peppers dried chilies. I'm soaking them in Lapsang Sushan tea, which is a very smoky, intense kind of flavour. I think that's going to add a nice bit of dimension to the harissa. So I'll stick a card up for you once that's published. As for the lasagna idea, I'm not sure. I think in theory it'll work. I just need to figure out how to get liquid into the rice without waterlogging everything because I was gonna use the tofu technique with the quinoa like I did for the shepherd's pie and the tacos. But if I put loads of water in there, it might break the tofu down too much. Maybe do like not a, quite a lasagna with multiple layers, but maybe do the mixture on the bottom and then a thing of rice on the top. That might be worth a go. I'll do some mental cooking. <laughs> That's how I do some of my recipes, I think. That's the outcome I want. How am I gonna get there and start breaking it down step by step? You know, recalling past recipes and what happened and try and figure out how to get that result that I want. I'm wondering if you could make like a cheats risotto, because normally with risotto, you have to add ladlefuls of the stock in at a time and let the rice grains slowly absorb. And the rice is, if I've remembered it correctly, it's a really high starch rice. That's what gives you that creaminess. Yeah, maybe try it with sushi rice to get that plump grain. Cook it like this, add white wine and stock or vermouth and stock, that kind of thing. And then you could add in coconut cream or coconut milk at the end to get that creamy liquid. I think that's definitely worth a shot. Might do that in the future. Again, keep your eyes out. I'll pop cards and links in the description if I do those. I'm gonna have some of the rice for my dinner and we're gonna serve it on the side of some tofu. I'll pop a link to the pancake sandwich that I did. I'll stick it down in the description. And I packed the outside in chicken flavor stock and like a bacon seasoning. I'm gonna do a similar technique, but mix the chicken flavor stock in with Old Bay seasoning. It just makes a really nice kind of rub for the outside of tofu and then bang it in the air fryer for 15 minutes. Yeah, it's 
that ridiculously tasty for how little effort it is. <laughs> so yeah, I think that's gonna work really well. I'm gonna give a big shout out to my Patreon fam. It's wonderful having a little community where I can share little behind the scenes from videos. Also some of the other stuff I've got going on. So they're looking at some Tansu steps that I'm making in miniature. I shared an album of pictures I took in Barcelona when I went last weekend. So yeah, lovely having a little collection of people that I can just be me with. <laughs> If you want to get in on some of that behind the scene action, I'll pop a link down in the description below for you. If you found some value in this week's recipe or if you just enjoy hanging out in the kitchen with me, it would be great if you could leave a little like. I don't like asking for them, so I never really do, but it does signal to the algorithm that it should serve the video to other people, which then helps me grow and build on things and afford food to put in the fridge. <laughs> If you want more vegan recipes that are often low effort and more often than not foolproof, be sure to hit subscribe and turn on notifications. That way you'll be alerted as soon as they're ready every week. While you're waiting for next week's, have a look at this. <laughs>